Hello again everybody. Today I'm going to show you a really cool mathematical impromptu card trick tutorial. This one was uploaded by Tally Ho Cards 9 called Same Place, Same Time. Another video by Tally Ho Cards 9. Click on the link, watch Tally Ho Cards 9 performance of Same Place, Same Time. See if you can figure this one out. Uh, you will not leave my channel. This will open a new window or you can click on the link in the description box below and you'll stay here watch his performance then come back and I'll show you how the trick is done okay for this trick you need 52 cards so if you have jokers remove them from the deck so you can give the spectators and you really want two spectators for this card trick the deck and you can have spectator number one spectator number two shuffle the cards cut the cards and hand you the deck when they're ready they hand you the deck and you say, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal cards on the table. Spectator number one, whenever you'd like, tell me to stop. And what you're doing is you're secretly counting the cards as you deal them and you're going to force an odd number on them. So you're counting, to, you're counting in your mind and if you're talking while you do this, then you're really good. But you're thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Suppose they say stop on ten. You want to force an odd number on them, so you say, okay, what I'd like you to do now is look at the next card and memorize it, and it's the five of diamonds. So you're actually forcing the 11th card on them, and they're memorizing it. If you were dealing the cards, and you went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and they said stop, you have an odd number over here on the table, so you turn over the 11th card, and it's the five of diamonds, and then memorizing the five of diamonds. So it's important that it's an odd number. Once they have this card memorized, you set it on top, place the rest of the deck on top, and now you go to spectator number two. But you have to remember the number, which was 11, and take half of that number, which in this case would be five and a half, and that will be your key number. So whatever odd number they land on, take half of that number, and it will be your key number. So half of 11 is five and a half, which will mean we're going to either use five or six, depending on which pile they land on. I'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so now we go to spectator number two. Now you don't have to pay attention, because it does not matter where they stop you, as long as they don't get past spectator number one's card. So deal slow if they... Spectator number one had you go down a long way, but like I said, it doesn't matter. You can go back a couple of cards. Spectator number two says stop right over here, and they're memorizing now the eight of hearts. Spectator number one is the five of diamonds. Spectator number two is the eight of hearts. So spectator number two, turn over the card, and you place the rest of the deck on top. So now, remember, you're mem remembering five and a half is your key number. So now you're going to give the cards a false cut or two, and you're going to deal the cards into two piles. So as you're dealing the cards into two piles, you're going to tell spectator number one, you're going to ask them if they see their card in the first pile. And pile number one represents five. Pile number two represents six. That's how we get five and a half as our key. That's the number in between five and six. So we're going to show spectator number one, pile number one, and we're going to catch a break underneath the top five cards. And if their card is in this pile, we're going to move those five cards to the bottom. So we're going to catch a break right into the five cards and show the cards to the spectator. And they're going to be looking for the five of diamonds. They see the five of diamonds in here. They see their card. Square up the cards right above that break. Cut the cards to the table. You've now moved those five cards that were on top to the bottom. You can also give the cards another false cut if you like. Set it down. You don't have to do anything with this pile now. Um, you're ready to go. If spectator number one's card, the five of diamonds, was not in this pile, you would then take six, which is uh, five and a half. You would take six, which is um, your second number. So between five, five and six, so you would bury six cards from this pile. I'm getting confused. So Spectator number one's card is in this pile. You bury five. If it's not, you catch a break onto six. You move six cards onto this pile. So that's hopefully you're following along. Then what you say is, okay, spectator number two, are you bored yet? Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can get your cards to be in the same place at the same time. So tell me what your cards were. And they will tell you the five of diamonds and the eight of hearts. And you'll turn over the cards and you'll go all the way through and see if you can catch the five of diamonds and the eight of hearts 
in the same place at the same time. And there they are, the five of diamonds and the eight of hearts. So uh, this is a pretty cool mathematical trick. And the way it works is once you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say they stop you at seven and they're memorizing the three of clubs, you then place the rest of the cards on top. Now spectator number two, let's say, um, let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say it was the three of clubs. So seven, you're memorizing three and a half. Okay, then spectator number two has you stop, let's say, all the way down here. Now, their card is the four of diamonds. Between the four of diamonds and the three of clubs are one, two, three, four, five, six cards. So this card will be card number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So card number one, card number eight. So that way they will always be in separate piles because this will always be an odd number. This will always be an even number. And if you use the key numbers like I showed you, um, it will work every time. Hopefully I did a better job of explaining this and this was better than my last video, which really didn't go over too well. Good news. Coming real soon, going live. This is my new logo for the thecardtrickteacher.com. What do you guys think? The new website will be ready to go live in a few days. Stay tuned. That's it. I'll see you next time.